Welcome back here at the main headquarters in Yerushalayim, Eretz Kodesh. I'm your host, Rafi Crystal Weiss. We're coming up on a beautiful past week seven. Looking forward to week eight. Hanukkah around the corner. Menorahs are out. Sufganiyot all over the city. Cherry, strawberry, chocolate, and caramel. Which one's your favorite? Let us know. We got a big guest from Yeshiva League Pass going to join us on the show real quick. This team, one of the top teams in their division and slowly becoming a top team in this league. We're going to look forward and look back. We're going to do it all right now in the FM Home Loans. Week 7 AFI League broadcast. Once again in the studios with your host, Rafi Crystal Weiss. And let's get to it right now. This past week, week seven, what a week it was. Many games coming down to the end. Many games tight. A lot of teams right now in the midway point of the season curving over into the latter part, into the last quarter of the season. Some teams only have six games left. Other teams have eight to ten games left. Right now, most teams know who they are. They know what they're playing. A lot of teams getting surprised in the later part of the season because they're not going in the right direction. They're not going up as they should be. They're not, their plays are not crispier. Their offensive drives are not going down the field slowly getting touchdowns. Instead, what's going on is they don't have an identity. They have a massive identity problem. They don't know which type of team they are. They don't know where to go. They, they know their flaws, but they don't know how to correct them. A lot of teams are finding out right now that this, this league is a lot more competitive than they thought. They thought they're just going to come into the league, not have any problems, not have any difficulties, getting touchdowns, getting scores, and right now they're getting surprised. There's no reason for a team this late into the season, game 11, game 12, to get surprised by their own team to get surprised that they did not produce like they should be there should be no surprise anymore you should know who you are if you're a team that doesn't work well with long passes you got to know you got to go up the field slowly if you're a team that knows that you got good wide receivers that can get the ball down the field fast you got to go take your shots deep if you know the running game's working for you go for the running game same thing on defense if you know zones working go with the zone if you know no man's working go with the man if you know bumper runs going if you know safety deep if you know blitzes on second down three man rushes you have to know what's going to work you have to know what team you are and right now i'm seeing a lot of teams late in the season being surprised of who they are being surprised that they're not getting the job done saying things like you know we're not the team we thought we were saying things like we don't know really where we're going a team to lose four or five games in a row inexcusable a team to 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 not be to not be where they want to be inexcusable if you're a team right now in this league and you're in the last fourth of the season and you're a championship caliber team and you're a team that believes that you guys can go the distance you got to get it straight real quick you got to get your identity going real quick and with the, further ado that leads us to a team that has their identity figured out and that's Yeshiva League Pass right now Yeshiva League Pass is blowing out teams weekend and week out Right now, the 219 points, 219 points that they have scored. One of the big surprises of the team, and we're gonna call on our friend from there to speak to him for a few minutes. How you doing? Are you more a, of a strawberry sufgani oat guy or a caramel? Strawberry. P speak to us right now about how Yeshiva League Pass started all started out as a team. How did this team come together? Well, a few weeks before the season. Uh, uh, our captain, Daniel Hurst, quarterback, called around, got some friends together, and we put together a last-minute team. Moshe Heller, um, I know that you you and your friend are part of Miva Serret. What was the reason you guys did not get on that team and instead decided to make your own team? What, did, you, did you not decide that you wanted to be in the league till late, or was there a different reason? Yeah, no, because I wasn't, I wasn't planning on playing in the league, and then, like, right last second, I got a call from my friend, and I didn't want to turn that one down. It sounded fun, so... What made you? What made you turn that decision around to, to, to decide to play play in the league? Um, well, to be honest, my captain said that we don't have to commit every week, and so we said like there's nothing to lose. So we signed up, and then we started coming, and we realized how fun it was. So we coming every week. What's the biggest reason Yeshiva League passes ten one and one? I would say the biggest reason is because there's no fighting. Everyone plays as a team. We play together. We play strong. Now, I know you, you and your friend, you know, maybe a few of your friends on the team, you know, you guys come out Motsi Shabbos, you watch, the, you watch the top teams in the league play. 
Do you believe that your team is Shiba League Pass? I know you guys are atop your own division, but you guys think that come playoff time, you could play with some of the better teams in this league? Um, I, I definitely do think that if we put our ability, we, we can play with a lot of the teams. Do you guys wish that you were more of a competitive division where you guys week in, week out would be tested? Yeah, we, we definitely do want to switch up or play against better competition. In order to play against better competition and win and make some noise in the playoffs, what do you think your team still needs to work on? Um, we definitely have to get more organized because we're a first-year team. So we're still working on it. We're starting practicing for the playoffs, and hopefully we'll, we'll get it together. What's the biggest thing practice does to a squad? It, it lets people get the right spot, be comfortable with what, what their role is. And it's, really, it's all about the little things. I'm seeing right now in the league that a lot of teams are, are going through some slumps right now. Teams that start off hot, going into slumps. I know you're a fan of sports. Um, how is a team able to really make sure they don't get into a slide in this part of the season, the midway point? And how do you bounce back from it? Well, thank God we don't know, we don't know what that slump feels like yet. But you know, hopefully we can stay strong. And I, I know the real way to stay winning is keep practicing, don't get overconfident, and Keep doing the little things. Don't overplay. Speak to me a little bit about this name, Yeshiva League Pass. Um, I, I'm aware that this is a little uh, little company, uh, not a little, but a company that you have made. Speak to me about the name and, and, and the company. Well, the company is uh, it's a company that covers uh, Yeshiva League varsity basketball, hockey, and some other sports as well. We, we're we basically the ESPN for the Yeshiva League. And I started it last year, and it's been doing well, thank God. When you're covering high school games, what's the, you know, when you're covering the teams and you're looking for the camaraderie, you're looking for the skill, what's the biggest thing that jumps out uh, out at you from the big, better teams than the, than the lesser better teams? Um, I, guess, I guess the teams that, are, well, first of all, are on the skill level. The teams that are more prepared, those are the teams that not live on the game. This week, I see you guys playing early on at 9 o'clock in the morning Friday. Do you guys like those early games, and how do you get ready for a 9 o'clock in the morning game? It's rough, but it is what it is. You've got to deal with it. The other team has that. Has, it's dealt the same hand, so it's whoever handles it better. And how do you get fired up for a game like that? Yeah, there's no really getting fired up. It's easy to get fired up when your team is doing well, so. If I'm speaking to you in about six to seven weeks, come the, you know, the Sweet 16, the Elite Eight, is Yeshiva League Pass still in the playoffs? I think so. Do you guys really believe that you can make a deep run? I think if we stay healthy, play well, keep up what we're doing, I think we may. Are you definitely the top team besides the top division in this league? Uh, I think I think so, yes. There you have it. Moshe Howard, thanks so much for joining us on the FM Home Loans AFI League Hotline. Have a beautiful, beautiful Shabbos Kodesh. Thank you, you too. There you have it, Moshe Heller from one of the teams in the bottom division getting fired up right now. His team's already practicing. They got playoffs on their mind, as you heard him. He's already thinking about the playoffs. And that goes for all the teams out there. There's no reason that come this time in the year, when you only have about three weeks, six games left, your playoffs should be on your mind. You should be thinking, what are we? What are we? Who, is, who are we? What are we going to do come playoff time? Because if you're thinking that question in three to four weeks in the first round of the playoffs, you're going to lose. It doesn't matter who you're playing. We saw it last year. A lot of upsets early on in the season, early on in the playoffs. A, a lot of teams getting knocked out who shouldn't have gotten knocked out. And the reason is because when you're going into a 50-minute game, 5-0, 50 minutes, there's a lot of plays. There's a lot of drives. And you've got to have a game plan. You can't just think on the spot, we're doing this, this drive. You've got to think, what are we doing? What, what, what are we going to do? What are we at least going to plan to do for these 50 minutes? And I'm seeing it right now. Teams do not have a game plan. If you're a top team in this league, any team in this league, and you're going into a game without a game plan, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to work. And we're going to look at Friday, the Friday Emoji Shabbos this past week in game in week seven. What a week it was. It got started early on in the morning. Just one chesed, getting two W's versus Reb Dovis Chassidim. 13 nothing in 7-6. Yeshiva League Pass, we just spoke to Moshe Heller. Getting two W's, 25-6 and 18-8 versus Leib Torah Lemming. Leib Mordechai, 
Not able to beat the Bear Juice, who were blown at teams as well. 28 nothing, 15 6, two W's for the Bear Juice. Sure way, losing to Team Turtles in game one, 19 nothing, but coming back in game two, winning the one in 20, 12 6. Team Caleb is on a tear right now, got game one in the books. They won 12 6 for Pacific Coast Academy, but in game two, it was a draw, 0 0. Dog House getting 24 0 in both games versus Colin the other. After that, it was. Halakhic Oregon Donor Society losing in both games to Chavetz Chaim 7-0 and 21-0. In the Moti Shabbos games, it got started at 6.40. Prompto is the soldier boy taking on <laughs> the Service King Spartans. Both of these teams, I do believe, could make some noise in the playoffs. Game 1, Soldier Boy looked really impressive on both sides of the ball. Able to sneak out a W, 16-14. In the second game, Service Kings by Spartans behind quarterback Nussie Felder. Able to pick up a close W, 21-18. Big Blue trying to get their first W of the season versus DC. DC's offense coming alive behind quarterback of Rumi Farkas. Getting that W, 28-6. In Game 2... Big Blue kept it competitive, which they've done a lot of their games this season, but fell 20-13 to in Game 2. Jay Fetters Jewelers trying to get a W versus the Bandits. The Bandits coming in behind quarterback leader Mordechai Krupp, bringing the team to a W and a victory 14-12. In Game 2, these teams went back and forth. Jay Fetters had a touchdown at the end to win it, but it got called back. They went for another play. They got a touchdown, but a sack was called, and they took a loss, a rough loss, 21-20. To the Bandits in Game 2. It was the OA Huskies taking on BDMG. OA's Huskies of Rummy Krieger coming from the hospital after he had a baby girl. Mazel Tov able to cradle in a touchdown again on the last drive for OA Huskies to salvage a 6-6 tie. In Game 2, it was the OA Huskies defensive line. Cindy Goldstein all over the field. Able to give a lot of quarterback pressure to Noam Gelb and get a W. 12-6 for the OA Huskies who since... They changed quarterbacks. It looks like they're turning around. And I want to stop for a second. Cindy Goldstein, I hope you're going to see this. Cindy Goldstein is my player of the week in game in week seven. You know why? This guy, midway point of the season, his team was struggling. As quarterback for the team, he took responsibilities. They were not scoring a lot of points. This guy came out as the quarterback. He took himself out. They had to bring in a quarterback from outside. Not only that, he got put on defensive line. Cindy Goldstein, as a defensive lineman, who probably in the back of his mind, I know I would be thinking, I should be quarterback right now. I got this team. I was quarterback from the beginning. He's played quarterback in the, in the years past. He never played in the top division. But he has played quarterback for season's length. Then he becomes a defensive lineman. It's very easy when you get taken out of quarterback. It's very easy to not give it your 100%. This guy, his motor right now is on an all-time high. His motor right now is unstoppable right now. And I'll tell you something. I watched that. I saw him going. He wasn't playing versus, you know, just a nobody offensive line. He was playing versus a guy who might have been stronger and bigger than him. But you know what? You can't measure heart. And this guy's heart, Cindy Goldstein right now, is on an all-time high. It can't be stopped. And he was able to get past the O-line of the BDMG and give lots of pressure. And basically... I want to give him the W. They won because of this man. And right now, Cindy Goldstein is putting the OA Huskies on his back. Not as the quarterback. Not as the quarterback, but as a defensive lineman. And he's a big reason why they got a W and they tied this past week. And I'm very impressed by his character, Cindy Goldstein, Yasha Korach, Kola Kavod. In the games after that, it was Merrick Kazmusen coming in at 8-0, taking on their first big challenge of the season. Y.L.E. Batchers. Y.L.E. Batchers, a little bit of a struggle right now. They got to bounce back. Merkaz Musin went up quickly, 13-0 behind quarterback Dobie Dreyfus and wide receiver Shragi Parrots. Two members who are both, there's four players on this team that are going for the MVP right now. If you include Mo Feintuff and you include Alicia Rudman, you got four players going for that MVP. Very impressive. Wiley Batch is able to get a touchdown and get the ball back, trying to get a touchdown to win this game in heroic fashion, but fell short and took the loss 13-7. Game two, it was Dobie Dreyfus and Shaggy Paris at it again. Wiley Batcher's offense had no answer for this shutdown. Number one defense, Merkaz Musin, and took game two, loss in shutout fashion, 14 nothing. After that, it was Young Bud sticking on the CCC. Chippies, chocolate chips. Young Bud getting two W's pretty easily. 14 nothing, 21 nothing, which I'm pretty surprised because CCC I was very high on. The last couple weeks they were playing good football. I'm not sure what happened this past week. It was the Rebish and Vikings taking on Torres Chaim. Rebish and Vikings were coming out hot after beating some of the top teams in this league the last few weeks. But Torres Chaim 
Watch out for them. I was high on them in the beginning of the season, preseason. I'm back on the bandwagon. I hope there's room for me. Get off couple. Get off the bandwagon. Let me on. Let me on. I'm holding on to the poles. I'll hold on to the caboose. I'm back on this bandwagon after new quarterback Zevi Grila coming in big and hot. Getting two W's, 19-0 and 18-6. Binyamin Larnon playing a big role. I want to shout out to my man, man, Ari Miller on the D-line. Getting that motor started early and often and getting a bunch of sacks, putting a lot of pressure on Salman Assist. Rebusha Vikings a little, little bit in trouble right now. They got to regroup, get back to the drawing board, figure out who they are. They need to get back into the win column soon. This team needs to build that momentum back before playoff time. The Mobsters getting two W's versus... Verse route 38 Warriors 14 nothing 2012 behind Akiva Klein, Sammy Sunnenberg, and team leader or AKA Hot Coco Machine. Care she left, and there you have it for the Friday overhaul. Is there? We're gonna turn now to the top five power rankings, and here we get it on coming in at number five right now. Still in the top in the top five, just barely. They need to regroup and they need to recommit. This team's in a lot of trouble if they don't get it worked out quickly. Avi Zern still got the confidence and the swag, but I'm worried about other things on this team. They need to figure out how to score and how to defend. They need to get it together real quick. Number five, YLE Bachelors. Coming to number four, the boys are having fun again. They're smiling, they're jumping, they're high-fiving. I haven't seen smirks and smiles I haven't seen in a few weeks. They're playing light and easy. And once again, this is just a game of football. You got to have fun. Number four. Taurus, Chai. Coming to number three, DEC was the number one team preseason. They're playing like it right now. They're putting all the pieces together at the right time. They got big man quarterback from Farkas. Donnie, Donnie Eastman has not even landed on the soil yet. He's still overseas. He's coming back. Number three, DEC. Number two, the veterans will use their experience come playoff time. They seem to be intimidating to the younger teams they got the veteran leadership they got the score trio now they got all players they're looking for the quarterback to get healthy before the playoff time number two pizzeria at front and the number one team of the fm home loans afi league they're big they're bad they're ugly but they're gonna bring it every game they get fired up they're looking for one goal they might even think about at this point an undefeated season they're looking to go all the way they don't care who's in their way they got top wide receivers, top D-line, top middle linebacker, top corners. Everywhere you look, including quarterback, they got top position players. Number one, Merkaz Moosin. And there you have it. That's your top five of the FM Home Loans AFI League. As we go right there and we go forward, we look at this upcoming week. And we got a couple good games Big games, BDMG and YLE Batches both looking for a W. Both looking for a bounce back week. That game's going to be hot. My early prediction in that game could go either way. Slightly fair to YLE. Then you got Torres Chaim going against Dance Eitzchaim. This game's going to be wild. The guys are going to be out there. It's going to be heated. It's going to be fire. It's going to be cold. I'm looking to see if Torres Chaim's quarterback can still play fun and still... Take this team and be the top team in the league. Very impressed with this past week. Devin Marmerstein becoming a leader on this team. I'm looking still for Shai Feintek to break out. I give the edge to DEC. But you never know. I'm big in towards time. And Mayor Kazmusen will be playing Rebusha Vikings at 8 o'clock. Mayor Kazmusen looking to go 14-0. Rebusha Vikings looking to bounce back. Obviously, the edge is to the Mayor Kazmusen. But the Rebusha Vikings, if they have their tight end back, Ari Kalfau, and Monty Kasai is on his game, which he usually is, and they can give Salmon assist plenty of time, and they can figure out a game plan, and they can get their speedy wide receivers to catch the ball and then run with it after. You never know. The Rebusha Vikings could blow the so far and go into the Malavo Malka with a W and knocking off the top seed, Mayor Kazmusen. And there you have it. Signing off right now is Ravi Crystal Weiss. From the headquarters in Jerusalem, Americanus from the FM Home Loans AFI League broadcast. Have an amazing night, amazing Shabbos, and we'll see you on the other side.